Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean. I'm back for another video slash recap and review for Insecure Season 5, Episode 6, Tired, okay? This is a really good episode. I'm so excited to dive into it. If you missed my previous review, I'll be sure to link it right here on the screen. And if you miss any of my other reviews for this season, I'll have them all linked below in the description box for your viewing pleasure, okay? Without any further ado, let's jump to the review. Let's get right to it. So thankfully, this episode starts off exactly where last episode left off, so they didn't leave us hanging. So Issa is still in the hallway, and she decides to go double back and go and approach uh, Condola, Lawrence, and Elijah. So she turns back around. They're getting ready to go back to the doctor's office, and Issa calls out to them to wait. So they're both standing there looking shocked, dazed, and confused. Uh, but, you know, Issa comes over, and she's like, can we at least try to pretend that this isn't weird? And both Condola and Lawrence both breathe a sigh of relief and in a surprising twist Condola uh, actually offers to let Issa hold the baby so Issa looks at the baby now let me tell you the casting is amazing this is one of the cutest babies I've ever seen he is so stinking cute so Issa holds the baby and while Condola and Lawrence look on lovingly and it's, a, it's supposed to be a precious tender moment there's lovely music playing in the background and then Issa throws the baby like a straight up jump shot. It is hilarious. And then, you know, she kicks Condola into a pile of clothes and she stomps at Lawrence like, you want some of this? And he just flinches and walks back and Issa laughs hysterically and she walks off. So this is just as I predicted last week in my review that this would end up being a comedy montage because the setup was just too perfect. I loved it, but it still surprised me because with the music and the background and, you know, the, the grown up mature conversation, I just knew that this was real but I was so glad that it wasn't but anyway so Issa is actually this is her fantasy what's going on in her mind but once she finishes going through this fantasy in her head she decides to cyber stalk Lawrence so she's looking up his social media and she realizes that he has moved back to LA remember last when they broke up he was on his way to San Francisco she didn't know that he was back so maybe the reason why they broke up wasn't entirely because he had a baby with Condola but also because he was moving to another state but now one of those issues is off the table now that he's back in LA. So it wouldn't be HBO if there wasn't a sex scene. So Molly had hers last week and Issa has hers this week. Now for those people who say that Issa and Nathan don't have any chemistry, I now agree with you guys. They they don't really have that kind of romantic spark and chemistry. I don't know. Um, they definitely seem off this season. But anyway, so Issa is, you know, doing her thing and she's like, you know, you love it? Do Is there anything else that you love? You know, she's hinting around, beating around the bush because last time we saw them, she told the man that she loved him and he said nothing back. So Issa's trying to see if she can get some conversation started and Nathan is dodging it like Neo in the Matrix. Like he's like, I, I see what you're trying to do, but no. Issa's getting quietly frustrated by the fact that Nathan hasn't brought up or even offered to discuss the fact that she told this man that she loved him. Next up, we're at the barbershop with Nathan, and he and his co-workers are all talking about a fellow co-worker named Suge, who is late as usual. Now, he's so late that he has a little bench of customers that have all been waiting for quite a long time for him to cut their hair, and they're all frustrated with him because they don't feel like he's pulling his own weight. And Nathan even brings up when he tried to cut hair for the homeless how he didn't want to do it. So nobody really likes him, but they put up with his antics because he seems to get a lot of big-name clients, and that's good for the barbershop. But, you know, the clients are complaining that they've been waiting for a long time and Nathan reluctantly finally decides, you know what, you can jump in my chair and I'll cut your hair. Now, my husband was there and he was just like, that is so against barbershop code. You never cut another man's hair. So that's like some unwritten man rule. But Nathan broke it. So we see Issa, she's at the hospital with Molly's family and she's bringing them lunch orders, getting their orders right. You ordered jerk chicken, you ordered this with barbecue sauce on the side. Like she's out here being friend of the year. But while she's delivering the lunches, she gets a FaceTime from Molly. Molly is in another state at a conference. Matter of fact, she's at a retreat for her law firm. So Molly lets Issa know that she feels guilty for being there and Issa reassures her that she's doing everything that she can. Cause Molly's like, you know, what if something happens while I'm out here? What if she never does this? What if she never wakes 
wakes up and Issa's like, your mom already knows, like whether she hears you say it again or not, your mom already knows that you love her. You've told her that your whole life and all of that. So she tries to reassure Molly that she's doing the right thing, that her whole family is there. There's really nothing that they can do anyway. Um, and she's been checking up on her and all of that. So, you know, Molly is being called back by Tori and she has to get off the phone, but she definitely feels better knowing that Issa is there taking care of her family. So Issa and Koya are in full on work mode. They're about to go and talk to a group that they would like to have at an event that they have coming up. And at first the group seems really receptive to it, but you know, they mentioned, you know, don't we know you guys from somewhere? But you could tell they were trying to think of where they had heard of the block before. And then eventually it dawns on them. And one of them says, you did that event with Crenshaw, didn't you? And Issa and Koya are like, yes, you know, they're smiling, thinking that that's a good thing. And then their faces immediately, the smiles turn to frowns and Issa and Koya can feel like the shift. So clearly the Twitter beef with Crenshaw is all over and the word has gotten out and nobody is as excited to work with Issa as they were before because Crenshaw has been throwing dirt on her name, honey. So Molly is still at her retreat and it's after hours. She's hanging out with her coworkers, laughing, joking, drinking top shelf alcohol, apparently. And they're having a really good time, even though Molly is clearly still stressed. She's still texting her brother Curtis, wanting to know if there's been any change in her mother's condition. But nobody really knows about it because Molly hasn't opened up to the group. So everybody just laughing, having a good time. And they're saying that they want to talk about first impressions. What were each other's first impressions of Molly and the new guy, Hayward? And they were saying how Molly was very bougie, came in there acting like she wanted everything done in the new firm, like how it was done in her old firm. And she was like, was I really that bad? And they were like, yes, but we love you now. One thing that I really like about this particular storyline is that it wasn't rushed. They were able to take their time and we were able to gradually see the partners warm up to Molly. And that's one thing that I like about this particular storyline. So Molly wakes up the next day and she's looking clearly hungover. She looks dazed, confused, still has all her clothes on, shirt half off though, candy in her bed, a random watch in her bed, a little bottle from like the mini bar in her bed. Like clearly she has no idea what happened last night. So she ends up down downstairs in the restaurant of the hotel and she's trying to order something to help with this hangover and the group calls her over and they're like hey party animal and she could you could tell that molly is mortified she's like oh my gosh what did i do so she tries to subtly bring up the fact that she did find a watch in her bed and she doesn't really know who it belongs to but she's trying to say it in a subtle way so that she doesn't sound too bad and so the girls are like what you don't remember how you got the watch and she's like no so one of her co-workers pulls out her phone and it is molly looking a mess she has a video of molly twerking and everything else she's acting how she normally acts when she's with Issa and her friends but she normally doesn't show that side of herself at work she has a very definitive line between work molly and after work molly and she got drunk and the lines got blurred honey and she was looking a mess in that footage but the watch actually belongs to torian it's actually his grandfather's watch you know molly had already asked him you know did we do anything because you know she found the watch in her bed and he was like no but that's basically how you got the watch so she's mortified but thankfully nothing happened with Torian at least not yet so Issa shows up at Crenshaw's warehouse and she has brownies in hand as sort of a peace offering but everybody's giving her the cold shoulder people giving her the stank eye she's asking if anybody's seen Crenshaw nobody's answering so eventually Crenshaw sees Issa and he comes over and he's like what you want Issa and Issa's like I'm I'm here with some peace brownies let's make peace and he's like you're, you're not seeing any of this from my side of it you know when we talked, I was inspired by what you wanted to do. And basically you, you sold me out, you know, you made it seem like we were in the trenches together, but the first chance you got, you went for the bag and was like, forget my art, forget my integrity, forget, you know, my art, all of that. So he was offended. She's like, but you're dragging my company. And he's just like, well, we don't need the kind of help that you're trying to offer us. Basically, like if every brand and company is going to come to you and make you want to change, whitewash or water down what we're doing then we don't need your kind of help. I can understand where he's coming from. I still don't think that he should have dragged Issa on Twitter. He could have come to her and talked to her like he was talking to her here. She is a black owned business. If he had an issue with her, he should have told her about that face to face. But you know, she didn't come to him, so he didn't come to her. So to, to me, they're both wrong. She was wrong for what she did and he was wrong for how he handled what she did, in my opinion. 
Then he goes on to twist the knife even further and says that Issa was the inspiration for his new sweatshirt line and on the front is plastered the word integrity. So we're at Nathan's Barbershop and everybody at the barbershop is putting in their booth rent and you know helping to chip in and they're complaining that of course Shug is late. So he finally comes through the door and they're like you know do you have your rent for this month and he's like no Nathan got it and Nathan's like what what are you talking about what do you mean I got it and he's like well since you're stealing people's clients then you must be going to pay for it. And Nathan's like, what? I was trying to help you, trying to help the shop. You had all these people who were going to walk out because you, you're habitually late. And he's just coming over. He's just like, I was going to have Wu-Tang come in here, but you know, so that we can all eat. I'm the one that brings in all the stars and the celebrities. Basically, he was very much giving them a whole, I'm the one selling all the records type vibe. <laughs> And Nathan and everybody else was like, no, you are late. You eat people's lunch. Like, they were all complaining. It wasn't just Nathan. But he was like, was it supposed to be a coup or something? And then he basically says, we weren't having any problems until he got here pointing at Nathan. He was just like, y'all going to side with this crazy bipolar man right here? And Nathan is clearly offended. You could tell by the look on his face. This is what I was talking about when I mentioned how I appreciated how the story developed with Molly and her coworkers. I guess when it comes to this particular storyline and with Nathan, I'm a little bit confused. Yes, Nathan suffers from bipolar disorder. That's one of the reasons why he ghosted Issa. You know, they did show us a couple episodes ago uh, him interacting with his cousin and his family and letting us know that he was also exhibiting, you know, some behaviors of somebody with bipolar disorder when he was with them as well. But they also showed us last week him taking his medication. So which one is it? Is he somebody who's a lot more stable and he's on medication or is it somebody who's erratic and isn't on medication? Are they trying to make Lawrence look better by making Nathan look worse? So Molly and Torian are giving a presentation at their big retreat and while Molly is trying to, you know, really get into it, you know, you know how Molly is. Molly is a boss and she's always on her A game, but she's getting a couple of text messages from her brother and they don't say what they're about. So Molly is getting a little bit nervous because, you know, her first thought, is it my mom? Is it something serious? what's going on is she's clearly distracted Torian picks up on that and he also picks up the slack so he kind of covers for Molly to give her a chance to sort of like you know regroup and he doesn't miss a step the people in the audience can't even tell what he's doing but Molly can she gives him a look that's basically like thank you thank you so much for saving me so it's later on that evening and Molly and Torian are having a drink and Torian's like my back is hurting and she's like why and he's like from carrying this whole presentation he's like I don't usually outshine you so easily like what's going on with you like be real and she tells him about her mom and the stroke and she's like and I I'm, I know I sound like an idiot trying to do everything and he also confesses to Molly that he went through the same thing last year when his brother was suffering from cancer that he was also at work and you know also trying to go through the motions and this is where they kind of have a connection this is something that they do have in common and he basically is like you can't let work be more important than your family and that's a lesson that Molly has been needed to learn but you know what he might be the one a teacher okay <laughs> So they're realizing that they really have never gotten a chance to know each other on a personal level. It's always been strictly business, but the more they get to know each other and the more conversations that they're starting to have, the more that they realize that they actually have a lot more in common than they ever thought before. I'm really liking this more personable side of Torian, and I like that he is very warm and welcoming and very that he's easy for Molly to talk to. Like she said, she definitely felt better talking to him because he's somebody who can understand. He was empathetic, sympathetic, you know, low-key, maybe even high key he is all the things that molly's ever been looking for in a man she wanted a black man who was successful who loved family and he, he showed you all of that in those couple of minutes okay i also like that he already showed you that his strength is in one of molly's weaknesses he says that there's nothing more important than family not even work now that's something that molly needs I'm definitely picking up what they're putting down and I'm not mad at it at all. I am here for a Molly and Torian little relationship if that's what they're trying to do. I'm not mad at it. And I also like the fact that it's somebody that we already know. We already said it was too late in the season to be introducing somebody new and he right there the whole time hiding in plain sight, okay? <laughs> So next up we see Issa and she's getting some tacos like she always do. And so while she's doing that, Condola pops up and Issa's like, why are you hungry when I'm hungry? So Condola's like, girl, you know, thank you so much for making the choices that you made. You know, you basically sent Lawrence right to me. While she's talking, she flashes a beautiful, huge ring on her finger. She's like, yes, this isn't the mall ring that he got you. This is much bigger and much more expensive. And Issa's just like, with every word that Condola says, she's just sinking and sinking and sinking. Condola said, you know, Lawrence, 
Florence moved back here for me. <laughs> and she laughs and Issa's like, wow. And she's just like, well, I really just want to thank you so much because all the choices that you made, you know, drove him right to me. And we're together because of you. So thank you so much. And then she goes and gets her order. And, and Issa says, but I was here before you. And Condola said, winners go first. And then she proceeds to roundhouse kick Issa into a bag of trash. I know what they're trying to do, but trying to convince us that Issa not being okay with a break baby is not her giving up easily. That is not, that's a huge responsibility. So Molly is back in her hotel room after a long day at this retreat and she gets a FaceTime from her brother Curtis and she's like, you know, what's going on? Is mom okay? And he shows her that the mom is awake and that even though she can't talk right now, she's able to like, you know, see Molly. She's waving at Molly. So Molly is ecstatic. She's just like, oh my gosh, this is such good news. She is just so happy. She gets off the FaceTime with them and she's like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. But while she's celebrating, there's a knock at the door. It's actually Torian and he brought her a swag bag. So Molly is overcome with joy after just receiving this good news and she hugs him. Hugs him good and long and then he, she tells him what happened and he hugs her again and they're just like embracing but that embrace is lingering and it's taking a while and then they're looking at each other face to face arm in arm and I'm like Ooh, I see a little chemistry and I like what I see okay I'm a hopeless romantic so let me have this okay so in a completely different side of the country and on completely different pages. You have Issa and Nathan. They're about to have some dinner together. The takeout that Issa bought was for her and Nathan. And so Nathan is telling her, you know, I just really can't trust the people at the shop. And, you know, actually, I'm not even sure that things are really working out with me in LA. I'm not even sure that I should still be here. And Issa's like, oh, so that's what it is. And he's like, that's what what is. And she's like, you know, I told you that I love you. You never said anything back. And he was like, are you serious? And she's like, yes, I told you that I love you and you didn't say anything back. And he's like, girl, you are so inconsistent. He's like, one minute you're crying in my mouth. The next minute you're, you know, telling me that you want to make things work with me. The next minute you're telling me that you want to take things slow. Then you're telling me that you love me. He's like, you are all over the place. You are so inconsistent. Apparently truth hurts because after that, Issa was like, you know what? Let's not even talk about it. And he was like, fine. And she said, fine. They sat on the couch in awkward silence. And that ended this week's episode. One thing that I love that Insecure does is they always choose their music very wisely. It might be catchy. It might be whatever, but it always has a point. So when the episode ends, the words to the lyrics of the song that plays are, there is a reason that I chose you. My eyes can see past the old you. Don't let your secrets control you. Nobody living is perfect. You know, Issa is the only one that we've seen that Nathan has told about his bipolar disorder. And I think one of the reasons why people think that he's flaky and that he's getting into so many arguments is that he hasn't told anybody. So that whole don't let your secrets destroy you could be the key to Nathan being a bit more stable if he actually tells the people around him what he's going through and what he's actually been diagnosed with. Maybe they'll afford him some grace. You can love somebody all you want, but you can't love somebody who is always trying to take off on you. And that's my issue with Nathan. Okay, you ghosted her in the beginning and you've been trying to be more consistent then but every chance you get to run you take it even in the episode where he uh was confronted by his cousin and Issa came up to him and wanted to talk he wanted to go off even when Issa cried in his mouth he wanted to go off he had a hard day at the barbershop he wants to go off this inconsistent half in half out that's not going to work in any relationship and I don't care how much Issa likes him you can't have somebody who you want to be with whose first instinct is to run. So this was a really good episode. It was packed full of, like every scene in this particular episode was useful. It pushed the plot along, which I really like. It showed character development for, for Molly and all of that. So I really did like how well written, how well directed this episode was. But I'd love to hear you guys weigh in. What do you think about Molly and Torian? What do you think about what I said about Nathan? Do you feel like they're trying to uh, villainize his character so that they can make Issa and Lawrence make more sense and have more people rooting for that in the end because these are both extremely flawed individuals and just like the song lyrics go nobody is perfect I, I can agree with that but at the same time I don't want to see another black woman settle for struggle love or a love that 
is so complicated. I want an uncomplicated love story. And I don't think that's too much to ask. Please remember that opinions are like belly buttons. Everybody has one. This just happens to be mine. I'm the one with the microphone, but you also have a voice. That's why I want you to weigh in in the comment section and let me know what you thought about this week's episode and what you thought about my opinions and this recap slash review. If you missed my last review, it's on the screen right now. So be sure to click that and watch that. And also while you're at it, subscribe to my channel and turn on that post notification bell so that you'll never miss a video from your girl. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Till next time. Later divas and dudes. This is honey.